right, got the dump truck in the shop. Today it needs a brake chamber. So, watched a couple videos online, read the instructions. That pretty much means I'm a mechanic now, so we'll get right into this. Pretty hard to tell, but if you look down, the hole for the caging bolt is off center. It's supposed to be straight in and flat, but it's kind of off to the side and the brackets tip to the side. The way the push rod comes out the back, it's supposed to be centered in the hole and it's not. It's right up by the top, so pretty good way to tell it's got a broken spring inside. So the first thing you got to do is cage the brake. That goes in there into a slot and does a quarter turn. And you can tell when it seats. Just tighten down the three quarter inch nut. A way to cheat is just applying air to the system and it saves you a lot of wrenching. Nice, that one's not seized either. So now that that jam nut's backed off, so we'll be able to spin that clevis off once this is all taken apart. Set that pin free. With the air evacuated from the system, you can loosen these up before the whole pot's loose. Put this fitting in the new chamber. So the swivel end is on the other end of this hose. So I'll just loosen this for now. need one of those things you have like in the center of your kitchen table that spins. That'll make this easier. So this new chamber comes with a different style of clevis. It's for a different slack adjuster. So, wow, gonna get lucky and this one's gonna thread right off of here. Not even any C's on this stuff. To get this uh, caging bolt back out, it's easiest just to put it in the vise. You want to make sure these mounting flanges are nice and clean. Before this new one goes on, these studs will be oriented up and down. And see how those air fittings come in about that angle, and that's where the hoses are. But on this one, the body of it is turned so they're pretty well horizontal. So I'm going to loosen this band and clock this so the air fittings are more like that. So there's enough slack in the hoses. See, now this bolt should go in straight because this one isn't broken. Okay, I'm gonna release the brakes. Cool, that's way easier than using a wrench. So with the brake all the way caged, there should be no pressure here now so I can loosen this clamp to rotate these ports. You gotta cut this push rod off and to figure that out, you hold it up where it's gonna sit and you use a square and you line that up with the center of the S cam. And then you subtract the measurement of this clevis from this end of the yoke to the middle of this hole. So measure back an inch and an eighth. And then you've gotta to go to this table, 30 long stroke, one and three quarter. So there was the first mark I made, second mark. And then you gotta measure back an inch and three quarters and that's where you cut it. So now this is ready to go back on. Put some pipe dope on the threads. Put a couple twists in this so when I put it on, it'll kind of start itself. Anytime you use this stuff, you get it all over your hands no matter what, but you can actually take stuff apart again, so it's worth it. Put a little in here. Yeah, that's way overkill, but whoever has to take this off next time will be thanking me. Everything can be a hammer if you need it to. There, done deal. That's all set, now time to adjust the brake. Pull this whole thing out, Then there's a little square nut up here. You gotta turn that to tighten it, push the brake shoes out until they touch the drum. Back that off half a turn, and that should be good. Then we'll do mark and measure. So before I made a brake application, this knot was tight. 
to the body of the brake chamber. So I'll measure that and it travels about an inch and five eighths. And on a 30 long stroke brake chamber, you're allowed two and a half inches of travel. So that's well within the limit on this side. So it's about an inch and five eighths as well. So that's good. We're in adjustment. 